Hey guys, this is Ruben Langdon, a.k.a. Dante from Devil May Cry, a.k.a. Ken Masters from Street Fighter, and also Chris Redfield from the Resident Evil series. And you are listening to the Casanova Podcast, the number one podcast in Hawaii. Jackpot. The Casanova Podcast, the number one podcast in Hawaii, is brought to you by these contributors on Patreon. If you'd like to see more content like this more often, as well as more podcasts, reviews, impressions, early access releases, live streams, and original content, then consider becoming a patron today. And welcome everyone to another episode of Hawaii's number one podcast, the Casanova Podcast. I'm your host, Mikhail Casanova, coming at you with another phenomenal interview. In today's episode, I've got the iconic Nura Ibrahim, aka Neurological. Now, Nura is an actor, a singer, and a writer from Los Angeles, California. She is currently cast as Jahan, the world leader of the resistance in Niantic's. 2019 reboot of Ingress, a globally played augmented reality mobile video game and serves as a consultant for the ever evolving RPG. Now you're going to be familiar with Niantic as they are the creators of Pokemon Go, which has been a global phenomenon for the last several years. You can find her playing Eve on Geek and Sundry's Vampire the Masquerade, LA by Night, and the new Dungeons and Dragons live stream, Have Dice, Will Travel. This past summer, she appeared on Ten Candles, an RPG on Geek and Sundry with Game Master Ivan Van Norman, and played Lady Macbeth in the first ever Shakespeare in the Pool Los Angeles production of Macbeth. Nora is also a black belt in martial arts, and it's just awesome to have her on the show. And if you're ready to do it, I'm ready to do it. Let's go ahead and welcome Nora onto the show. All right, and welcome everyone to another episode of Hawaii's number one podcast, The Casanova Podcast. I'm your host, Mikel Casanova, coming at you with another phenomenal interview because I've got the honor and the privilege of interviewing the one, the only, Nora Ibrahim. Nora, go ahead and introduce yourself. <laughs> That's so, that was very sweet. Thank you. Uh, also, thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be on Hawaii's number one YouTube channel. That's like a show that's amazing. No, well, um, I, I wish I was number one. I'm, I'm, I'm close. I'm close. I'm, the number, we were number one podcast. <laughs> I'm, uh, um, if you say it enough times, it becomes true. So this is true. This we're, is true. I'm just gonna go with that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, yeah. And uh, go ahead and um, you know plug yourself, like all your social media outlets, uh, wherever you are. Um, your stream your twitch channel as well and any upcoming ventures that you have uh so the audience okay. can follow so uh you can find me at neurological on instagram and on twitter mm -hmm. and uh as far as the twitch channel goes i've been mostly um appearing as cast members for geek and sundry and previously i was on maze arcana so basically i'm on different networks Mm -hmm. But uh, this next coming year, I have some uh, some solo Twitch ventures uh, happening in the works, which can't talk about yet, but uh, D&D related. Okay. So that will be on my personal Twitch channel. There's nothing on there now, but if you do want to follow that, that's also, nor I'm neurological across everything. Um, so that's where you can find me. I'm currently uh, still on LA by Night, um, okay. uh, Vampire the Masquerade, which LA by Night, which shows on uh, on Geek and Sundry's Twitch channel. Um, I'm going to be on. Oh, I'm still. Uh, I'm trying to think. It's been a long year. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's been a very long year. I am ready for 2020. Um, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> it's been a very good year. Also very hectic. Um, 
I also play the character Jahan on the mobile app game Ingress mm -hmm. that's made by Niantic, who makes Pokemon Go. Um, I'm in the cast of Have Dice Will Travel, which is a D and D, um, a D and D adventure, which is going to be. Uh, it's already been filmed, so it's like a pre-filmed, and it's been shot the way a little differently from traditional uh, D and D live streams. But mm -hmm. that's going to be airing sometime early next year, I believe. I I can have I'll I'll post updates for that on my social okay. media. Okay. Um, I, well, I appear, well, I do still do live theater. I do, was in, uh, <laughs> I played Lady Macbeth in, um, in Shakespeare, uh, wow. I can talk about too. so they, I can get into this later, but we did, uh, instead of doing Shakespeare in the park, Shakespeare in the pool, mm -hmm. uh, we, there was a production of Macbeth and I played Lady Macbeth, which is role of a lifetime for me i've always been such a fan of that play mm -hmm. um as well as a like upcoming um there's going to be a there's a web series i can't really say much else that i'm currently involved in the uh still in the development but that's mm -hmm. going to be in the upcoming um uh, let's see for LA by night that lives to see another day, but I can't really say much else. No, Eve is no. not dead <laughs> it, without any spoilers for anything. I don't, I don't know what else. Well, I don't know what I'm allowed to say uh, with that show or not. And I don't want to step on any toes. So, okay. but that okay. show is, uh, is, is still alive and um, you have not seen the last of me on it. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay, so it's, it's safe to say that um, there's never a slow moment for you. You're always busy. <laughs> this, is, this has been a year. This has been a year. Uh, I'm actually very new to all of this. Like this, all just ha like just hit the ground running, and it's been an insane year for me. Very mm. grateful for for all of it. Um, I'm still trying to wrap my head around it just oh, okay. the the year that it's been and really looking forward to where it's going i'm just kind of seeing what happens and taking opportunities as they come along yeah, yeah. i mean this this year it's 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 been i like i, I want to touch on what you said earlier about it being like a long it has been a very long yeah. year but it's crazy when you look back and it's like there's only a month and a half left you know yeah, i don't know <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I'm going to wake up and it's still April. Like it's, right? it's, it's, I feel like there's been four years of activity shoved into one year and it's all been amazing. <laughs> I'm just still trying to like catch up to it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and for the audience that don't know that, that's unaware, uh, we actually met at Hawaii con uh, yes. this year and uh, I was incredibly nervous sitting on the panel, moderating it for you and uh Luke Gygax and and Turbo. Turbo's making me nervous. I love Turbo. <laughs> He's making me so nervous. I was like, it's like, uh, what do I say? He's like, it's okay. Just, just keep going. I was like, okay. <laughs> that's, 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 that's people's general first reaction, I would say. But <laughs> so I could totally see him being like, you know, being nervous. And he's like, you're doing great. And then like... <laughs> It's so funny because he he's got this serious face, and and for the people who don't know, like it's it's something you would have to see in person. He's got this serious face, but he will crack a joke, and it's like you have to process it. Like, did did you just joke? <laughs> yeah. Usually, yeah. <laughs> and usually, it's like the kind of. Uh, the kind of nervous laughter afterwards, where you can finally let go of like yeah. all like you were what you were feeling. Like, oh, okay, okay, no, it's, it's everything's gonna be fine now. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, but but yeah, I mean, we you know we got to be at uh, Hawaii Con. Uh, the, the panel you were on was absolutely fantastic, you know. And That's I, honestly, like one of my favorite topics of discussion. Yeah. For for that, yeah. And, and, and I mean, if you would like, we, we can dive into it, you know, for the audience that may not be aware sure. of. Um, yeah. uh, basically, the, the panel that we uh, that, that we were on, we talked about uh, how gaming um, 
helps, you know, improves people's lives and helps them work through and cope through situations and, and develop as people. But uh, in, in your own words, I don't want to put, you know, words in your mouth, but if you want to explain. Oh. Um, no, it was a, like, like you said, it was primarily a panel on how tabletop gaming and RPG, uh, you know, RPGs have, have changed your life for the better in whatever way. And then it was each person kind of, um, telling their individual story yeah. and, and getting to hear everybody's because everybody's story is different and uh, how everybody kind of got into it mm -hmm. um, was really just, I, I enjoyed listening to everybody give their, their side of the story as much as I um, felt so humbled to share my experience with it as well. Um, I, so I started playing. I mean, I grew up doing theater and choir and any, anything performance based. I was like really into as a child, mm -hmm. total theater nerd. Um, and the reason why I kind of got into theater as a kid mm -hmm. um, was because I was painfully shy, like super, super shy, What? super shy. Like I, <laughs> my mom would make fun of me because the phone would ring and I did not want to answer it because I got such high anxiety from like, the thought of talking to a stranger on the phone. Mm -hmm. And like, now I'm sitting here like, do, we're doing this. <laughs> so, <laughs> this would have given, this would have given seven year old me like a panic attack. I don't, I can't like, don't even want to think about it. Um, <laughs> it was, it was bad. Like even looking back on it, like I, I give, I give myself a lot of excuses for a lot of mm. things. Like as a child, I'm like, yeah, whatever. But for that, I'm like, no girl, no. <laughs> no. Pick up the phone. <laughs> so, uh, so getting back, I was a big fan. Um, so I found for me that theater helped me uh, express. Like that was the only time I didn't feel shy was mm -hmm. when I was performing. Whether I was like singing or whether I was, uh, you know, in a play or something, that was the only time I didn't feel like afraid of the world around me. And I felt mm -hmm. like empowered to speak my voice. Mm -hmm. um, but D and D and like getting into um, like tabletop games, tabletop role-playing games really took that to like a whole other level. Yeah. Um, because not only you know, when you're doing theater, you're you're reading somebody else's words, you're reading somebody else's thoughts and feelings. When you're doing a role playing game, they're still your own thoughts and feelings. And mm -hmm. nobody's writing the words for you, but you get to create this character and delve into becoming that person mm -hmm. without any in an environment that like encourages you and, and you don't feel uh it, it's it's without fear of being judged mm -hmm. like you like for so many things out in the real world um you know you have you have ways that you should act in ways that you shouldn't act within a workspace within your mm -hmm. school within like your church or within anything in like in that's community based there are you're still kind of like confined within this bubble of how you should act and what mm -hmm. people expect of you. Yeah. And when yeah. you play RPGs, you really get to, to break down those walls and really get to discover and dive deep into those aspects of yourself that you don't have an outlet for, a proper yeah. outlet for in the real world. Yeah. And you're, and you're doing that in a space with your friends so you get to have these experiences and really feel like even though you know you can create these crazy characters but there's truly they're always a part of you somehow mm -hmm. you know no matter how crazy or insane or, or or evil or whatever uh they're they're always a part of you and you get to really be i, I never i felt like i'm the most myself mm -hmm. when i get to play with my friends because I don't have to censor myself and I don't have to be afraid to like, to, to go there and, and be this person. And I get to like break down these expectations. They're so confining in the And once you, once you get to do that, you realize like, wow, like I really being at work, like nobody, I don't really get to, to really say how I'm feeling 
or like really explore, like really get to like be silly or, you know, have any sort of like true outlet where like you feel completely comfortable being yourself around somebody else. And yeah. I think that really, it, it, it really elevated that for me. Definitely. Definitely. And, you know, and it just, it's just one of those things where it's, it's, I, I feel like it helps astronomically and, you know, our development and, understanding our different ticks and, and and triggers and 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 ways that we can hey you know we can improve here like i you know one of the ones i shared with uh tabletop and, and video games helped me with uh you know getting better at english because it's not my, my native language and and yeah. being better at reading and there are so many benefits that come to to gaming especially tabletop role-playing gaming that i think but for those of you for the audience, you know, if you've never experienced it, I highly implore you to try because the worlds that you create, the friends that you can make from playing tabletop gaming is just, it's unlike anything. It's unprecedented. Hmm. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, with that, um, I, I'm still stuck on the part of you saying you're shy. Oh my God. No, you have no idea. Like you have no, no idea. It was bad, bad to where like, I can't even justify it. I can't even be like, you know, well, I didn't have, you know, I had no, I had like three younger brothers. I would like chase them around the house. Like as a kid, I had no, like I, you know, play with the neighbor. I was for some reason, like for me. And I think, uh, you know, I was so shy that like my, I was supposed to like skip a grade like really early on. Mm. And my parents were like, no, 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 no. She's tiny. She's, I was also like, I had like a big, I got tall really quickly. Yeah. So I was always like really tiny. And then, and he just and then shot up. Like, on top of, and then I shot up and I was like, I was like, bitch, what you want now? <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, you give me your lunch money. Uh, I, <laughs> I never, no, I would never bully anybody. Bullying's bad. PSA announcement over. But I, <laughs> <laughs> I was very, it was like inexcusably shy. Um, but I, I'm glad I got through it though, uh, in the way that I did. Um, I still, I, I think like I'm, I'm still the kind of person where if I go into like a large social gathering um, and I'm meeting people for the first time, I'm kind of like slow to warm up. And then as soon as you get me going on something, I won't shut up. Yeah. And then, yeah, so it's, it's like, I'm, I still kind of like, kind of like dip my toes in the water. Yeah. And then if it's cool, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just, you know, belly flop right in. It's fine. Um, so yeah, it just, it really, it really helped me come out of my shell a lot and um it's uh, on top of that like it, it really helps you build um just like tight-knit friendships that i you don't really get to you don't really get the space for as an adult anymore mm -hmm. you know you can you can meet new people and have uh you know meet them within social settings but I feel like those kind of adventures that you play in those, in those, um, those, uh, you know, battles that you win together, like you really feel like you've, you've battled them together mm -hmm. and you, you form these bonds with your friends that I feel like the people who I play D and D with, I have like a very special like place in my heart for them. No offense to the rest of my friends. I love you all. Um, but like, I really, <laughs> <laughs> I love all of you equally. Um, no, but I really, I really do. I feel like you, uh, you form very special bonds with the, with the people you play like campaigns of D and D with. Okay. Yeah. And, and, um, if you were to pick like one or two or maybe even three, uh, of your favorite experiences playing, uh, D and D. You know, uh, as a kid going into your uh, your you know your early adulthood, like what what would those be? Like walk us through that. Um. Well, I've only started playing D and D as an adult. Okay. 
So I, I don't have the childhood experiences. I knew of D and D. Growing up, I didn't know anybody who played it. Mm -hmm. Like I knew of it. I didn't know anybody who played it. So when I became an adult and I all of a sudden, like, you know, one of my friends mentioned D and D and I was like, Oh my God. Yes. I like sparked this thing. Like, yeah, I've, I've been wanting to, to learn how to play this forever. And like, just, I just needed people to play with. Um, so for anybody who's, for anybody, just side note, like who might be listening and doesn't play and wants to find people, um, finding a local game shop, uh, is a great way to find uh, a D&D group to play with, or sometimes they have like game nights. Um, sometimes even just like going on Facebook or going on your social media and being like, I wanna learn how to play this, does anybody play? And mm -hmm. you'd be surprised at like friends that you never knew. Yeah. Or like play, like I think, I feel like now people are becoming more vocal about it. Yeah. But you know, you, you're still surprised by like who actually, like who's played before, even if they played a long ass time ago, mm -hmm. you know, a couple of times, you'd be surprised to see like who of your friends either has played um, or is at least just interested in playing. And then you guys can learn together. So those I think would be my first, uh, if anybody wants to learn how to play is interested to, um, to reach, just reach out to your friends or to your local game shop and find um, find people there. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I feel like, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like, uh, tabletop gaming, even though it's been around the longest, you know, between that and video games, I don't feel like it's hit that level of mainstream, you know, acceptance in the way that like video games have, like, if you were to look like at video games 20 years ago, to where they've been in the last 10 years. Now it's it's the, the societal norm. You know, we've got yeah. Street Fighters about to be headlining the Olympics 2020, which is insane yeah. to me. I'm like, in and of itself. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I don't know. I don't know. It's, uh, no, just saying it's amazing to see the progress um, of how popular and part and how much a part of uh, just mainstream culture it's become. And I think uh, a lot of the the resurgence of D and D has to do with um, just streaming, yeah. In general, Twitch, um, and then I really think Critical Role. Critical Role is like the Simpsons of D and D shows. Um, yeah. I love those guys, and I think they're doing uh, an amazing job. Just you know. I feel with those two things and just people being more encouraged to play, I think it's really taken off in a way that I didn't think it would be, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> and, you know, I, I feel like, you know, like you said, like with Twitch and uh, just the streaming for, for D and D and for tabletop gaming, I feel like in a couple, you know, a couple months, a couple years, I could see, that hitting that same plateau of, of mainstream gaming that video games have. Uh, and mm -hmm. it's just, you know, the possibilities of it is absolutely endless. And it's, you know, it, it's, it's amazing to think like 20 or so years ago, gaming in all of its forms mm -hmm. was kind of that thing where it was kind of taboo. And now it's like, everybody's gaming. And it's like, Oh, okay. I, you yeah. know, it's, it's funny because I was talking it's, to, no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> no, I was just going to say that it's, it's completely been like de destigmatized, like nobody's, nobody's beat up or nobody's made fun right? of for playing video games or, or, you know, or, and now you see the same thing happening with, with tabletop. Yeah. Because I remember growing up, like, I remember in, in like in the early nineties where, if you were playing tabletop, or if you're playing video games, or you're playing card games, you used to get picked on and beat up. And it, it's crazy to think, like you know, how the kids are all into Pokemon. Pokemon is like a a, a global sensation. Mm -hmm. I remember when it started <laughs> back in the day, <laughs> and you had the cards, and then people used to make fun of you for playing. Like, oh, you're playing a card game. You're playing okay. what? And like now, it's it's the most astronomically huge thing i'm like wow yeah. it's it's yeah yeah <laughs> and before it, it would be like you get made fun of be like oh you play you play D, &D in a basement and now it's like right have you seen my basement 
right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's it's a completely different uh, time, and I'm I'm to see how much just video games have have come along in the past. I don't know, like decade or yeah. To I, I makes me it makes me curious to see what's next for for RPGs yeah. for tabletop. Because I feel like tabletop is just like a tabletop RPGs are really just coming out now, like as being uh, they're sort of getting into like mainstream now. I think that's yeah. that's fair enough to say uh, to see where that's going to go ten years from now, twenty years from now. Right? Um, <laughs> yeah, I, have, I, I don't even know like where and what direction it's going to head or what it's going to look like. Yeah. So, but it's, I'm excited about it. Yeah, you know, I. I it's it's going to be something to see like the how the landscape just changes and especially with you know with twitch taking off the way it's taken off we've got mixer now youtube is getting more serious about you know uh streaming both yeah. uh, video games and tabletop you know it's it's going to be something like i i i'm definitely looking forward to it yeah so uh, one other thing I want to touch on, since, you know, you're all you've done a lot of acting. How, what inspired you? Like, how did you get into acting? Like, what was the motivating factor? Um, well, I, I like I said, I did. Um, I loved I loved it from like as long as I could remember. But I loved mm -hmm. it doing theater growing up. I never thought out i never like went out to be an actor i never sought mm. out to i never pursued it um i moved to la to uh get my master's in acupuncture and chinese medicine oh yeah i didn't i didn't have so i'm i'm uh first generation and having like to be a first generation child i think a lot of people no matter what their uh their ethnic background is Mm -hmm. it's very the parenting is very similar <laughs> it's very similar and so it's like if you're not a doctor or a lawyer or an engineer they're like yeah but what are you doing actually yeah. what is that though <laughs> yeah. what is it uh like like i can't i can't explain to like my great aunt like what twitch is or what streaming is you know yeah like, I'm, and so i i'm <laughs> and so i I, I kind of uh, did the academic route and I, I was always good in school and I always loved science. Um, it was always a, something very dear to me. Like I when in university, I, um, I was a TA for the boat for both the bio and the chem department. I dissected cadavers. Like I, I did a lot, like I, I was very, very steeped into the sciences. And so, um, being in that uh like a first generation kid where it's like you have to you know you have to pursue academics like yeah. you're not gonna, like don't do this you're making a big mistake so i came <laughs> yeah. out to la <laughs> <laughs> i know i know the experience I'm, I'm telling you i'm telling you like it, it's a, across the board no matter what country your parents come from if you're a first you have such a it's such similar parenting mm -hmm. um and you can't really blame them because your parents really did did so much and sacrificed so much to give you a better life and like it's i get it i get yeah. it um <laughs> but i came out to la to get my master's in acupuncture and chinese medicine and then i um uh, and then I found out, you know, I, I knew people who who played D and D, and um, and so I and then got introduced to other people. So one of the first people I got introduced to and became friends with uh, was Jason Carl, mm -hmm. who uh, is is the storyteller for for Vampire the Masquerade, and he's actually also my first dungeon master. He ran uh, Curse of Strahd. Wow. Yeah, so that's oh. how I, that's how, it kind of like, like putting all the pieces together. So uh, um, Jason Carl is one of the first people I met. Um, and then Satine Phoenix and Rudy Rutenberg um, from Maze Arcana were the, also I kind of met them at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, and as I started like learning how to play D&D &D and like given, um, you know, my, my background in theater, Mm -hmm. I was given the opportunity 
uh, I was asked if I wanted to be on Inkwell Society, mm -hmm. which was uh, a show <clears throat> on Maze Arcana that uh, Rudy um, was a DM, Satine was on it, myself, um, and also B. Dave Walters, who's also on LA by Night. So kind of mm -hmm. like it's it's LA's D and D live stream community is is so small and everybody kind of knows each other. And even if you don't know somebody, it's like one degree of separation, and mm -hmm. it's pretty tight knit. And every everybody kind of likes to work. You know, they become your friends, and everybody likes working with your friend, like working with their friends. And so that's <laughs> kind of how projects happen. Mm -hmm. So uh, Inkwell Society was the first live stream that I was I uh, was ever on. Mm -hmm. And um, from there, um, when LA by Night was um, just getting started, B Day was cast um, as Victor Temple, uh, undisputed mm -hmm. Bar Baron of the Valley, for any of those uh, LA by Night fans who might be watching. Um, so he was able to. Uh, as part of his character, he was able to create, he said like, I will, I want, um, I want to have like, like my, my driver be like my sidekick. I want to create this character. Mm -hmm. Um, and then he, he gave me a call and he said, um, he's like, look, I want to, I'm, I'm getting a chance to, to like base, to, to write this character into the show. Mm -hmm. Um, I really want to base her on you. Are you okay with that? And I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm okay with that. I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> totally okay. <laughs> totally all right with that. So uh, so he, so that's why Eve is named Eve. It's the first two letters of my last name. Mm -hmm. So the character is actually based on me. And then, but originally, in, or I shouldn't say originally, in the very beginning, um, Jason Carl played her as the NPC and then oh. brought me on to, to play the character. So when I finally got on to play the character and was like, oh my God, she's not just an NPC, like she's an actual <laughs> character. Uh, the fans who like, they have, the fan base is amazing. They're, they're incredibly um, excited about the show and just have so much love for, for all of us. And we, you know, they're amazing and I love them. Mm -hmm. um they just lost it and we're just so supportive and and i've been coming back on ever since from then awesome awesome yeah, yeah it's really great and then jason to have jason carl be like the storyteller and he was my first dungeon master i have i have so much love for that show for the people that are on it mm -hmm. yeah. and he I'm was sure. always uh he's very great because I, I mean i love jason because he kind of sat me down and after the character was created, like pretty much from then on, mm -hmm. was just like, cool, here, now you can do what you want with it. Like I had complete trust in you to, to, for whatever you feel like is appropriate for her character, mm -hmm. like go ahead and do it. So, which is, which is great as an actor to, to be able to have that sort of like freedom, which you should have in an RPG anyway. I think people have a kind of like, are unsure about um, like how the streaming aspect of it happens with like with RPG, but like I've really been given the green light just to like go where uh, go where I feel like her character needs to go, and that's you know it takes a lot of trust. So yeah. it's been a really really amazing experience. I'm I, I'm I'm over here like she's got some stories. Share them. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Um, as far as like LA by night stories. Yeah. Um, okay. So I guess ah, I don't want to, I'm going to try to like say what I can without giving a spoiler. Okay. Because even though it's already out and it has been out, I know some people watch it in different, um, like maybe somebody just might be starting it from the first season mm -hmm. as opposed to like completely caught up. I'm not going to assume, like I, I know that all the fans aren't completely caught up and I, so I don't want to like give a spoiler for this, but. Okay. Okay. At, so so uh, before, before you start, remember <laughs> okay. this is pre-recorded. You're going to get to see it before it goes live. So whatever I need to cut out, if it's a spoiler, we'll cut it out. So. Cool. Well, cool. I mean, it's already, <laughs> already happened. It's already happened, but at the same time, like I, I hate, uh, you know, when 
so, somebody will say something and make a comment on Twitter and somebody will be like, no, I didn't know that was happening yet. And it's like, that happened three seasons ago. But, <laughs> <laughs> so I will just say, um, I, uh, a, a really great experience from that was doing the live panel performance of, of mm -hmm. LA by night at WonderCon. And mm -hmm. I was originally, so my, so the plan for me was, um, you know, there was the, the original cast was up on stage and I was going to be me and, and, uh, Vince were like, are, we're like going to be like surprise, surprise guests. So we were going to come mm -hmm. out from the audience. <clears throat> um, so, <laughs> so I basically, before I went on, Jason pulls me aside and he's like so you're you're a surprise guest so and, and so just so that they're it doesn't interfere with any sort of thing that they're telling what's basically what's just going to happen is you know victor's going to get a phone call and it's going to mm. be from you and he says and honestly do what you want you know like i i, I trust you like i i know that like whatever you do it's going to be awesome so just go you know just mm -hmm. give me the green light so i oh god i don't know what like how much i can all right so i, <laughs> I i'm trying this i'm trying to be i'm trying to tiptoe around anything that might be a spoiler so basically i eve's character uh originally was a ghoul Mm -hmm. She wasn't a full on vampire. And, uh, and so she was brought on um, as a favor from uh, an, an older vampire that that Victor um, was working for sort of uh, just to kind of she was brought into like keep in the storyline to keep an eye on him, make sure shit doesn't go sideways. Mm -hmm. And basically she just comes in and, and <clears throat> has to get in the van and like save everybody in on multiple situations, mm -hmm. put out fires. And so uh, there was, before WonderCon, the season had ended and there was an epilogue where um, she, for the first time, because she's very like straight laced, like she's a total badass. Mm -hmm. um very stoic this for the first time she kind of had <clears throat> this moment where she got to vent her frustration about the situation that she's in mm -hmm. because she is she is bound by blood to serve somebody almost indefinitely mm -hmm. you know and what what kind of like stress and pressure that was and it was a really like breakdown moment for her, uh, wow. and then it was kind of like it was a very it's very emotional. Mm -hmm. um, it's still up on on the vods uh, for anybody who wants to watch it. At, um, it was in the first, I believe, the first season or mm -hmm. the second. I can't remember what it was the first. <laughs> um, um, I want to say the I want to say the second maybe. I don't know. Um, you'll have to watch them all. Um, so yeah. very... <laughs> Links down below, people. I, sound like that. I don't know what I'm saying. Um... <laughs> so she has this like very emotional breakdown, which uh, was very rewarding as an actor to to play. Because <clears throat> then she really, for there were like tears, and it was emotional, and and it was amazing seeing the um the fans response to it because it was a very like real moment and 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 a very just like even though it was a very specific storyline for her just a, a a real universal um a, a universal feeling that like people can identify with of like feeling trapped in a situation and mm -hmm. feeling like i'm never going to get out of this like this is not what i wanted in my life you know Mm -hmm. Um, so to, to see, to, to be able to, to really, 
uh, to go there emotionally and then just to see the audience response to that was amazing. Um, so wow. that, that capped off that season. And then she was kind of like, you know, she's, I, I have to go back. I don't know when I'm going to see you again. And it was kind of like their goodbyes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and then WonderCon happens and it was a surprise. Uh, they didn't know that like, uh, so I, nobody knew that I was going to be part of the, the thing up until it happened. So all of a sudden mm -hmm. he gets his phone call. Uh, you know, I, I, I walk up to the mic and it's, um, and, and I was dressed actually in character too. So there was that initial, like, oh, that, you know, you get to hear <laughs> the, the audience response, which was, it was just awesome. Um, so my idea and, and what happened was I, I called Victor from wherever, uh, undisclosed location I was at mm -hmm. because we were no longer working together. Um, it was kind of like I, I was saying, it sounded like I was saying my final goodbyes. And I, and I said, and I finally like, uh, like thanked him and like, was like, I'm going to miss you. And it's like the very, like, to, like, they never really got to express to each other. their they're like how they feel like their friendship. It was always implied and the situations that they were in, uh, during the game were always like um in like mid battle go go mm -hmm. go and so that was what people really got to see and they finally got to see um their that they were actually friends and like the emotions behind their good behind like seemingly a goodbye mm -hmm. um and so and it was very tearful and you know i could hear people in the audience kind of sniffling and and i was crying you know, i was like <laughs> 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 and, um, <laughs> And um, for the for the cast, mm -hmm. they didn't know what was happening either. Only, the only people that knew what were really happening were, was me and Jason. Mm -hmm. And so the cast thought, like, "Oh my God, Nora's not going to come back like for the show. Like this is Eve's final goodbye." Like so, we did this whole like it was a very uh, very heartfelt, very like wonderful, you know. Uh, um, Dorothy's like, I think I'll miss you most of all kind of moment. Yeah. You know, in the, in the, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was very like tearful and heartfelt. And it was, it was also like a very rewarding as an actor to, to also just kind of do as you feel is right. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was kind <clears> of a dick <throat> move because I knew it was coming back. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and when I did come back, and I will say this without the, without the spoiler, I did come back, and it was a plot twist. Uh, more than just me coming back, there was an actual okay. plot twist beyond that. Um, so I was like, yeah, I knew I knew what I was doing at the time, and I was like, yeah, it's a dick move, but I think it's gonna be, <laughs> it's gonna be fun to watch play out. <laughs> and it's gotta, you know, just stir things up a little bit. Um, so I think that was kind of my favorite my favorite moment. Yeah. So it so it's uh it's it's safe to say that you truly enjoy and are passionate about uh not only your role in the that show but also like uh what you get to contribute to it. Yeah, I mean it's it's um the thing about Vampire the Masquerade which is so different from uh well, I shouldn't say so different. Uh, which is different from D and D is that like whereas if you prefer in D and D it can just be a dungeon crawl you don't have to do any role play to to love playing D and D there's no right way to play D and D mm -hmm. you can either like role play heavy and that's cool if you love role playing or you can play D and D with absolutely zero role play and still have like as much fun playing it and and still feel different like rewarded differently for, for and still have the same love for the game mm -hmm. whereas vampire is very role play heavy. And so uh, it is, it's very rewarding to, to be able to emotionally dig deep into a character's um, desires, their flaws, um, you know, their goals, their relationship with, with the other characters. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's very rewarding as an actor playing vampire because of those reasons. Like you really get to to explore it and especially on that show with you know the whole cast is so talented 
Um, so it's really just such a joy every time I go in there to and, and sit down with them um, and sit down with Jason. It's always such a joy because you don't know what's going to happen, but you know you'll 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 get each other there. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. So, so is it kind of like one of those situations where, um, for your character, you're having to do like method acting, like you become that character and like whatever situation that they're put in, like you have to think and respond as if you are them. Like, is that? Totally, totally. Okay. I, there is no, when I am in a scene, when I'm in a character, it's, it's, every thought and desire and word that comes out of your mouth has to be fully driven by that that character has to come to life mm -hmm. it's not like what you what for me it's not like what i think this person would say i i try to like disconnect i feel like that's like a middleman and i try to like disconnect that and just try to pure, purely like be that character mm -hmm. at, at that moment Okay. And that to me is from, from then, from there, I just feel, uh, you know, if you, if you immerse yourself in that, in that scene work, if you kind of get lost in it and that, and it becomes real to you, mm -hmm. those emotions that you feel are real emotions. You know, it's no yeah. longer acting at that point because you're not having to act sad. You are sad. Yeah. You're not having to act angry. You are angry. And so it's, it's taking away that notion of like trying to interpret something and just being it. Yeah. So, you know, and, and that's one of the things, um, and, you know, someone who used to do theater in college, uh, I've, I've heard a lot of people over the years say like, Oh, acting is easy. Anyone can do it. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, go ahead. <laughs> Here. <laughs> right. <laughs> it, it it's um you know when you and I, I love the fact that you you touched on like the fact that when you that there's that separation between you know trying to act sad or act however the character should be or feeling or responding and when you're in that character like when you are when you've embraced the character it, it's just a natural thing and I, there are people I feel like that can naturally do that some that can learn how to do it over time but you know it's it's a skill and a yeah. gift <laughs> yeah everybody i mean everybody's process of getting there is different yeah um and i can i can definitely appreciate that because you know no two people are the same mm -hmm. um but so much and this is this is a cliche thing to say but it's so true is that you know acting is reacting if you have if you're working with somebody who is, who is, you know, it's, it's all about listening to the other person. I think, I think in the beginning for somebody who is just starting out as an actor, who's just trying it for the first time, the first few times are there, they're, um, just getting into it. Um, I think they're so concerned with themselves and their mm -hmm. own lines and their own emotion and their own, that they're not taking the time to really listen and react because so much of it depends on what the what you're it's the give and take it's like what am i giving this person yeah and what are they giving me and how are we uh how are we connecting yeah because otherwise you 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 could be two people reading the line and be in completely different scenes even though you're like saying the lines for the same you're, you're performing it together but you're in two different worlds yeah okay okay um i'm gonna throw a curveball question to you uh, uh oh. Okay. I don't okay. know. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so, 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 you're in LA, and I, I, I have to ask you, how okay. do you deal with that traffic? Uh, I don't have a car at the moment, so I don't. <laughs> okay. Okay. But uh, I, no, I did, I did have. I, I only just recently got rid of it, um, to because it died. Um, <laughs> so I do do to be fair, like I do you do need a car living in LA. So it is, mm -hmm. it is inevitable and it's pretty terrible. I was trying to explain when I first moved to LA, I lived in Santa Monica and my youngest brother was going to UCLA at the time. Mm -hmm. And you know, technically, technically it's close 
to each other. My mom would be like, I, I, my, quotations. Technically, it's close. And my mom like would be like, you know, you should hang out with your brother. And I was like, are you mad, woman? It's like, it takes me like an hour to get to cross the, I'm not going to cross the 405 to hang out with my brother. I'll hang out with him at your house. Like, I'm not doing it. And it sounds terrible. It sounds terrible, but you get, you get used to like, doing things within whatever neighborhood in LA mm. and then like on occasion you go and do other stuff and that's kind of like how you cope with it um and that's like just just as it is with anything else you kind of like learn to live with it you know it's shitty um but I don't know I gotta get to work so I gotta do it um so yeah it's it's terrible I I don't wish it on anybody <sighs> Okay, so last time I was in LA, um, I was <laughs> flown out to a convention, uh, E3. I was flown out oh, there. Good yeah, so um, first time ever going to E3. And um, I, I was asking the company, which the one that sent me was, uh, I'm wearing the headphones now. Uh, <laughs> so I, right? So um, <laughs> I asked him, I'm like, okay, so uh where am i saying they're like oh you're gonna stay at this hotel by lax so i was like oh how far is that from the convention center they're like oh, oh it's not that far it's, it's oh. not that far you, you get there in about 10 15 minutes i'm like okay stupid me stupid me i took an uber no we, we took a lift and the lift from the hotel which i forget i think we were at the holiday or something like that from the hotel to the convention center was like an hour and a half. I couldn't. Yeah, I'm in pain it. for you. I'm, <laughs> I'm listening to your story. I'm getting road rage. Like my heart, my heart rate just went up. Like just thinking of like, how dare they put you near LAX? <laughs> oh my god. Oh, I'm so sorry. It, it, I, it I'm, was, I'm, I, I couldn't believe. It. I was like, it took this long, and it's like we got there. And um, we got to, we went and got our badges and then we couldn't check into the hotel until later that day. So we had to catch Uber back. And that was like another hour and a half. And then when we got there, you know, got all our stuff ready, like a camera equipment and everything for E3. And we got back to the convention center. Um, Lehua had left her, her, uh, her badge at the hotel. So she had to catch another, another Uber back. I'm there. I'm like, I can't film anything because it's kind of like the setup we had was one person had to be the camera person and the other one had the mic and everything. And it was, it was, we were there for five days. So three days for E3 and then two additional days after before we flew back. And after that, we were like, we're never complaining about traffic in Hawaii ever again. Oh, and people in Hawaii are so nice. Like then nobody, like people in LA drive like such assholes. Right. Like, it's like, have your turn signal on. Just like, let me in. I need to go to this exit. I need to be in this lane. Just please let me go. And you're like, no, nope. but people like speed up just to be an asshole and like not let you in. Whereas like people in Hawaii when I was there, I was like, How, look at that. That's so nice. People are driving like civilized people. Right. It's like you need to. Oh yeah, go, just come on, you know, and just throw a shock into oh, him. Oh, 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 oh wow, wow! Like it took. I feel like it took. It takes me like when I. I every once in a while, I have to get the hell out of L.A. Yeah. And then it takes me like that. Like that first initial day to just like not to not like feel like I I'm angry at everything. <laughs> <laughs> just like your commute to work will ruin your entire day and you haven't even been to work yet <laughs> so it's, it's 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 a problem no it's but like it's you, you, you gotta decompress from the trauma of dealing with the la lifestyle like I, i've got a couple a lot of my friends that are there they're voice actors they're like yeah to get to this audition it takes like two and a half hours uh yeah. there two and a half back i was like are you serious yeah yeah oh my goodness yeah, yeah i've had to do that you know i've had to do that definitely go from where i am to like 
Culver City and back and it's like you just have to do it. <laughs> and sometimes like people like as actors you do that sometimes people have like two three things they they audition for in, like one day and it's just like constant driving back and forth and it's like you just can't get around it although i will say like <laughs> podcasts helped my road rage <laughs> i can put on a podcast and be like i don't i you know if i'm late i don't care i, I at least i get to like listen like finish this now yeah and get my closure <laughs> on the story then like be angry at this person if had I like not been listening. So that does help me. Oh, uh, I'm not even looking forward to, I think there's a couple more conventions that I'm supposed to fly out to for it in LA. And I'm like, after E3, I'm like, I'm still decompressing. Months E3, later. E3 is, is huge. Like as convention wise, it is huge. And it like, you can't, then there's so many people and there's like so many things going on and it's just like constant like lights and distractions and shiny things that like you just want to you know it, it's it's very overwhelming and so I, I i understand that there's i've done like hawaii con was nice it was so chill yeah it's so mellow it's so beautiful <laughs> like ah oh, <laughs> the sun's the sun is shining and you know people are swimming and everybody's so relaxed and i wasn't used to it like <laughs> i'm so like like my walking pace in the beginning was like we gotta go we gotta go we gotta go i gotta go to this thing and then like then like by the second or third day i'm like it's cool i'll make it one of the games the game started 15 minutes ago it's fine it's fine <laughs> it's cool uh all good <laughs> And surely enough, like I would show up and it's people are still like trickling in. I'm like, awesome, it's fine. <laughs> so, 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 like comparing like um, your experience at Hawaii Con to like other conventions, like how, like, how, okay, so are there any similarities other than the fact that it's a convention? Like, I, I, I agree with you. I've been to a lot of different conventions, and the pace, like for the audience that's not aware of it. Uh, other conventions, it's like, you gotta go. It's like bam, that. Bam, 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 yeah. But you, the moment you wake up <laughs> and you sleep, your day is full. Yeah. Your day is full and you're lucky if you like get to eat in between like the things you need to do. Yeah. 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 Um, some of them have different, like a very different, like I love, um, Gary Khan was an amazing con to be in mm -hmm. this year. Um, for those of you who don't know, it uh, is um, a convention that's put on in, in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, that uh, Luke Gygax does uh, to commemorate both his dad, Gary Gygax, D&D, &D, um, and then also just like that, that OG generation of like of, of RPG writers and like story developers and like mm. all, all of those people, like just to honor the, those those OG creators, and uh, and also honor the the legacy of his dad, and that's um, and it's it's in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, because that's where uh, where he grew up, and uh, it's it's put on in this in the Grand Geneva Hotel, so it feels like it's a very contained. Everybody who goes to that con is staying in that mm -hmm. one hotel. It all goes on in that one hotel, very similar to Hawaii Con. Um, so it's really great because it's, it's big enough to where it's like, wow, there's a lot of people here and like your day's full and like you're playing all the, and they're live streaming all these games and you're like, oh, mm -hmm. there's interviews in between. And it's, it's, it has that energy still, but like, of the excitement of, of, you know, all the, all the games going on and, and the people that you see. Um, but it's still like, for me, just felt like like nerd summer camp because the D, &D <laughs> streaming community especially is is in la is so small like between la and 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 seattle mm -hmm. uh, is so small but big enough and like and people like you 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 get to see everybody at like events like this and then everybody kind of has their own streams and does their own thing and maybe guest stars and a few other things but really there's only a few times out of the year that everybody's in one place 
Mm -hmm. And so it just felt like nerd summer camp and everybody's like happy to see each other. And then, and it's also like really accessible for, for fans. Like we're all just hanging out in the same place. Mm -hmm. Um, so everybody's having a good time. It's super chill, but again, still like large enough to where, um, you know, it's exciting to see all the games going on. Um, and then like the, all the vendors that are set up, mm -hmm. um, the auction that happens and, and that, and then the live streaming. And it's, it's, it's always like a really fun, I'm really looking forward to going to it next year. It's in March. I'm not, I believe it's March. It was, it was towards the end of March. Yeah. Yeah. Late March. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So really and, looking forward to that. And people, you should definitely go if you have the opportunity. <laughs> yes. Yes. That one's, that one was, was a, it's a big, it was a big highlight of my year for sure. Definitely. Definitely. Um, I know um, we were shooting for an hour. We're pushing a little close upon it. It's like two minutes away from an hour. I'm not mm -hmm. too sure. Uh, I want to be completely respectful of your, your time. Are we, we still good to go for a couple we're, more minutes? Yeah, yeah. We're good to go for a couple more minutes for sure. Okay, okay. Cool, cool. All right. So uh, last few questions, a couple questions I have, um, you know, with touching back on Ingress. You know, okay. I, I, I want to ask you, like, what was it like working with Niantic? You know, and for those of you who are not familiar with Niantic, uh, they are the creators of Pokemon Go, which was a global Oh my god, I remember when Pokemon Go came out. That was a global phenomenon. Um <laughs> yeah. but what was it like for you like getting to to voice uh be selected to voice Jahan and uh to to be part of Ingress and to work with Niantic? Like was that nerve-wracking? Was it exciting? Was it everything all mixed up into one little ball or <laughs> Well, it was it was super exciting. Um I can can I talk about how I got into it? in the first place go for it so <laughs> i so D, D does these like live stream events uh every year in may mm -hmm. uh this year they did the descent uh, and it's usually for like a book release um but we, it's like three days of or two days of like live streaming and um and an immersive like D, &D experience mm -hmm. uh last year they did stream of many eyes and at stream of many eyes i met my friend emmett Fury, who, if you were, if anybody uh, knows or remembers, last year when they rolled out, uh, prior to them rolling out like that event, mm -hmm. they did this whole um, like immersive uh, ARG thing that like started, I think, with a Yelp review that's connected to this other thing that connected you to this. And like yeah. people got keys and like they finally like put the puzzle pieces together to figure out what was happening. And then it, and that's how, and that's what, how they rolled out mm -hmm. um, stream of many eyes. Well, the, the creator for that and the person who ran that uh, is Emmett Fury, who works uh, at Niantic as um, a writer producer for Ingress. Mm -hmm. And I met him there. And I didn't know, like, we didn't talk about Ingress at all. We were just kind of like getting to know each other. And I uh, was just like kind of hanging out the whole time, uh, introduced him to a bunch of people. Um, he introduced me to a few people. And then, and then we, we kept in contact with each other. And then that was kind of it, we're just kind of like mm -hmm. social media friends. Um, and then one day he's like, hey, uh, so, and he's like, <laughs> he's like, so I work for this company and they do, <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> You know, no big deal, but uh, I work for Niantic, who made Pokemon Go, and there's this other game that I work on, Ingress, and he said that there is, uh, there is um, a, an audition for a role. Are you mm. interested? And I was like, again, fuck yes, I'm interested. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Like, I think the thing, my, my, um, my motto for this whole year has just been like, fuck yes, I'm doing it. Just like, just say yes to mm -hmm. the, the opportunities and then just see what happens. Like what's the worst that can happen. And it's been, it's been successful for everything that I've done. So very grateful um, for everybody just kind of like giving me opportunities. Um, but yeah, so anybody who's, who's in it really wants to get at it and gets small, like however small you see, like you think, that this some opportunity is just do it like you if, yeah. you if you have an idea for something just do it 
um, cause you don't know what, where it's going to, where it's going to lead you or what, or the next thing it's going to lead you to. But he said like, do you want to audition for this role? So I'm like, yeah, sure. So I, I drove again, traffic, uh, drove very far to get, uh, to this audition. And I was like, I was kind of nervous. I was like, oh man, I can't believe I'm like going into my antics offices. Like what I do? I'm like, I don't, I don't know. I didn't know anything about the game at the time either. So I just kind of like, what? <laughs> So I went in and it was like the most chill office I'd, I'd ever been to. Everybody who works there. Wow. And it's a small, it's like that office is very small because um, I think mm. they're based in the Bay Area, like their, their main mm. offices. And then they also have their LA office. So I, I get there. Everybody's just super chill, like eating lunch, talking to each other. Like it was very warm and friendly and like inviting. And uh, they kind of, um, they sat me down first and like, we're like kind of explaining what the game was. And then like, I remember <laughs> it was like a big, it was like one of those big, like old yellow, like, yellow pages, like plop down on the table. And they're like, this is the lore of the game. And I'm like, oh shit. I'm like, I'm not gonna memorize, <laughs> I'm not gonna memorize all this. What I'm like, I don't even know what's happening is, and it's, and it's an entire different world with like different terminology and di like different histories and like different names for like civilizations. And you're just like trying to wrap my head around it. And at the end, they're like, cool, you got all that. And I'm like, no, <laughs> and they're like, I'm just messing with you. It's fine. It's, it's cool. <laughs> so they sat down. Um, so I read, I read for the, for the part, mm -hmm. um, and they're like, cool, cool, cool. Uh, well, we're having callbacks. Um, Cause I think they were auditioning for a couple of days. Like, we're having call that callbacks on this day, show up on this day. I'm like, cool. Mm -hmm. uh, so I go back for the second one for the callbacks. And I was like, this is exciting. Oh my God. I'm like, what's, and now, and now, now I'm getting nervous. Cause like now I made it like one step, mm -hmm. one step further. But, uh, and because so much of that, it, it's not just doing voiceover work. Uh, it's not just doing scene work with like a script. You're mm -hmm. also, uh, you also have to play that character immersively. Yeah. And so that's what they wanted to see. They wanted to see the improv of that character. And so I was like, oh shit. Like, I'm like, oh, that's when like, I start getting like, oh my God, I'm like trying to do improv. So I'm, I'm quickly trying to like wrap my brain around a character that like, I just got handed this thing. And so we, uh, you know, we got to workshop things a little bit and I did the audition for, uh, for like the producers there and actually like, yeah, so that they had like their full, their full staff there, mm -hmm. um, their full development team. And uh, it was a really exciting moment because this never happens ever. Like when you go to an audition, they'll tell you, they're like, okay, cool. We'll let you know. Mm -hmm. Like you never get told no or yes, like on the spot, but they were like, cool. So we love it. Like we, you know, welcome aboard if you'd like to. And I was just like having to be like, <laughs> it's cool. It's cool. It's fine. It's cool. I'm cool. <laughs> I love don't your energy. Oh, don't act too excited. Don't act too excited. Don't act too excited. Don't blow it. Don't blow it. Be cool. Be cool. Be cool. I'm like, awesome. Um, I did not do the. I did not do the fingers. I'm. I'm. I'm glad I didn't actually do that. Uh, I felt like doing it, and I didn't. Um, I was self control. It took, it took a lot. It took a lot for me to like to composure, and I'm like, oh my god, I'm sweaty. <laughs> I'm sweating so much. But no, they were, they're super sweet. Um, <laughs> again, the entire, <laughs> and I'm just like, God, is it hot in here? <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, no, they were, they were just been, everybody on that team is just, you know, super, um, super chill. Mm. And because, because the role is, so much improv like they definitely it like love and kind of like expect a little um 
you know, feedback and kind of like questions about the character and like, hey, or, and, and so, like they'll take some judgment, like, what if I do it this way? Like, what if we do this this way? Um, it's a very, um, it, it's a very, uh, you know, there's a, there's also like a sense of collaboration there because they, they take a lot of that there and they appreciate a lot of that input because you are mm -hmm. very much working together to, um, to improv certain, um, certain scenarios. Okay. And, uh, it has to realize, and so it, it's never, it's, it's also like if you're an actor, it's also very rare that you're in a situation where it's like that because usually it's like, do your lines, do it the way we want you to do it. And then that's it. Like, that's what we're paying you for. But this it's, it mm -hmm. seems very like open to, uh, to your ideas, oh, which is okay. very nice. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So that, that's how I, that's how I got into it. So the, the experience, so it's not just voiceover, um, and scene work, but <clears> you are also <throat> flown out to these events that they call anomalies. So when you play the game, uh, it's a mobile app game very similar to Pokemon. So it's a geolocation based mm -hmm. game. And you are either, when you begin the game, you start by choosing a faction to belong to. So you're, you're mm -hmm. either on the enlightened side or you're the, uh, on the resistance side. And just to, I kind of like need to give some, I guess some sort of background lore on what the game is about. Okay. Otherwise, none of what I'm saying is going to make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we can cut all of this out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so when you the 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 point of the game, so there is uh, it's kind of like the backstory is there is this energy that exists without the it's throughout the universe called XM energy. And this mm -hmm. exists everywhere. And uh, XM energy, it's been found by these scientists that XM energy um, can, be, uh, can be accessed through certain portals throughout the earth that like lie on the, or like within ley lines or within like, they found that they occur uh, within or near, um, places of interest throughout like human civilization like so major mm -hmm. landmarks museums and so scientists have found that this xm energy is somehow is linked to the human evolution of their creativity and so xm energy is what actually allows human beings to advance um as as homo sapiens throughout the entire you know existence mm -hmm. um in history uh and so it's kind of has this like ancient alien vibes where it's like where does this come from it's not actually it didn't actually exist did it always exist on earth or was it brought by somebody uh and the people who are on the enlightened side they are of the belief that you know whatever this is this is good this mm -hmm. is helping human civilization we're better because of it like all for it and then you have the resistance side which is like yeah we don't know what it is this mm -hmm. is problematic because you don't know if somebody like is somebody using this for um for like not you know for 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 does somebody have bad intentions Mm -hmm. with the use of this was this brought on by something else that does not have human beings in their best interest mm -hmm. you know and so it's not that they're against what it has brought on you know historically it's that mm -hmm. we need to know what this is and where it comes from we can't just blindly accept this in our lives and and, and assume that it's that it's 100 percent good Mm -hmm. you know yeah so that is the so my character jahan is like kind of like the a, a leader of of the the resistance <clears> side <throat> um her she comes from this this ancient family line who has 
uh, who has studied this for like uh, generations upon generations. And they've actually discovered that there's this other, like kind of like the antimatter to the matters like this, uh, mm -hmm. this other kind of energy but like that's been covered up by so this whole, there's like there's conspiracies this so like oh, like this game has everything um, <laughs> it, has, <laughs> it has i mean it's got conspiracies it's possibly got aliens i don't know it might <laughs> Um, <laughs> it has, uh, you know, government secret cover-ups. It has like, you're basically, you come in and you, and you're an agent, you play an agent of like mm -hmm. one side or the other, and you're kind of out to gain, um, you want to gain control over certain territories to open up this portal and you mm -hmm. want to gain it, gain that land for your side. Um, so what what's been interesting with that, so that those so they have these these live events called anomalies where people from all over the world they'll have like cities um, designated throughout the world and on one day all of people gather in those cities to play this game together mm -hmm. and whatever happens and it's usually it's usually um, there's a goal like capture the Osiris stone or, or, or gain access to this because mm -hmm. whoever does gain it, it kind of changes, it affects the lore of the story. So this is a living story that's happening. Mm -hmm. You know, you have all of this backstory, but anything that the players do can affect the lore and the characters as well. Mm -hmm. And so, and, which is really cool. And so they fly, um, certain of our you know they'll fly us out to these cities mm -hmm. to to be at these anomalies and when we do it we're like completely in character completely wow. in character like we're there in our outfits um we show up to these events people seriously treat me like i'm not nora that i'm jahan when i mm -hmm. go to these events and they'll and they'll be like what do you think is really going on with this person and this person? And and you have to know enough of the lore to like give, you know, uh, uh, what, what that character would think of this person or this person, or mm -hmm. if not, you just have to bullshit them. Like, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. <laughs> to be perfect. <laughs> Oh man, I feel like I'm. I hope I don't get into all this. Like Nora spills the tea. I'm like, what? <laughs> uh, so like, 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 for example, mm. like if I if I don't know, if I honestly don't know, because we're all agents and there's this like whole conspiracy thing, I like will like lean in and I'll be like, this is not a safe place to talk. <laughs> I'm like, you know, we have to re. <laughs> Just so I could peace out, because I'm like actually in an airport and I'm like trying to catch a flight. <laughs> um, and like, uh, so contract, like it, it's in my contract that like, if I, like if I, if somebody on the street, even mm -hmm. if it's not an anomaly day, if somebody like calls me out, Mm -hmm. And I'm like, and it's, and it's kind of, I could, I could always peace out and give them the whole, like, it's not safe to talk, but like, should I choose to engage in this situation? Uh, I also still have to do it in character. Wow. So I'm still, it's still, it's, which I was like, shit, I don't know. Like, how am I going to, that's, that's the thing in this whole process. Like I was the most nervous about, like, mm -hmm. I actually have to, there's nobody else cut. And then like, and then you know you grab some water and then like you have normal conversation mm -hmm. i had an entire weekend where there's like hundreds of people and that's how they that's how they treat you and then you are that person for a weekend <laughs> wow yeah. yes which so, is exciting so, and also cool but also strange and, <laughs> and this is stressful I, no no it's not it was not stressful i oh. it, was, it was a lot of fun it was a lot of fun it was strange at first and then you kind of <laughs> get used to it and then uh, you know all in all like everybody's there to have a good time and like nobody's a dick if you're like on the opposite side of whatever because people still you know it 
there is still the sense of like, yeah, I'm playing a game. Mm -hmm. But a lot okay. of that goes out the window sometimes. <laughs> 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 A lot of that goes out the window sometimes, like when they like, uh, you know, if they if they see you or they're like, uh, but for the most part, everybody's and no, no matter what happens, like I've I've never had a bad experience. Everybody's been like super respectful, mm -hmm. um, and just and just have it and just like having fun and like very excited to be there. Um, that community, I think, is is really awesome. What I learned, I, I, I the thing that I love the most about going to those live events is just um and i still had to do this in character i'm like so what's your story agent like where are you from like what's your... <laughs> and they'll they'll introduce and th there's a thing where like if you go to these live events you have um kind of like pokemon cards of your characters mm. and so um i get to give i get to give mine out to people and like, you know, I'll, I'll sign them and whatever, and we'll take pictures and all this stuff as this game is happening. Um, but what's amazing is like people have made their own cards mm -hmm. and they love to like trade them with you. And so like, I'll, I'll go to these things and I'll have like stacks of like, of uh, of like the players cards that they made for themselves or like flags with like each team, they'll, they'll have like their local, like their local um, group that they play with, like within mm -hmm. their own cities. And they'll make flags and like I'll have like flags or pins. They love making their own like their own like stuff, you know, uh, mm -hmm. like patches and 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 things to like identify their groups and their and their towns. And I loved hearing their stories. I heard so many stories of people who like, um, like I was I was like super out of sh like I was like out of shape. I like didn't like really. Um, I didn't really have like much of a social life outside of work. I started playing this game. I met like all of these people here and like now we play all the time and like and and they'll like tell me like how you know how much they lost or like how, like how many pounds they've lost or like um collectively or like individually and like how just like how much more active they are and how much more they know about their city mm -hmm. because of it because it's geolocation based and when you go like you get to read about like each um each landmark you go to so like now you know like now my friends come to visit and i can like be their tour guide because like i know so much about the city i live in which is <laughs> awesome and, like another in the and the uh just like the new friendships that people form and um people who do these like go rock challenges where they'll they'll like back they'll get backpacks like go hiking and like running up through like whatever area they live in uh and i think it's it's great like it's amazing that a mobile app game brought people together to be active outside which you think is like counterintuitive to video games but like it's happening right? <laughs> yeah. yeah awesome awesome um so i've got three more questions i don't know if we have do we have enough time Depends. oh yeah yeah sure okay so um you're also a singer yes so how'd you get into singing i mean that's i did that my entire life so i don't okay. remember a time when i didn't okay um yeah <laughs> any interesting stories or what's that any uh, interesting stories i mean i don't know i had like <laughs> I mean, I don't, I haven't done it out in, in LA yet. Mm -hmm. Like, so it's just kind of like stories growing up or I don't know. It's just, I, I feel like it's, it's always been a part of like a performance or I, I can't really <laughs> think of anything terribly exciting at, at a singing thing that I did. But oh, uh, come on, we, we know you did a duet with Beyonce. Come on. No, yeah. <laughs> no, that opportunity would have given me a heart attack before I even got on stage. <laughs> Honestly, like what if somebody if somebody told you like, cool, 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 cool. So um, just throwing out ideas. Uh, how would you like to sing with Beyonce tomorrow? Uh, like, I just, no, I know. I just I <laughs> no. My my anxiety yeah. would, would go on overdrive. The anxiety, yeah, absolutely. No, I can't. I'd have a heart attack. And even if I did, if I even if I did make it onto stage, I would just be like, "Oh my God, there's Beyonce." <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know if I, I don't know if I would even like actually.
actually sing, like sing so much as I would mumble and drool like into the microphone. Like I can't <laughs> the the radiance that is Beyonce. I can't. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not ready. I'm not ready. <laughs> Oh God. Okay. So um, down to the last two questions. Um, so what are some things like some hobbies that you have or things that you like to enjoy uh, outside of everything, everything that you do, you know, acting to voice acting to D and D to streaming and content creation. Like what are some things that you like to do like just for you? Uh, just for me that I would say is completely not game related or performance related. Um, I really love hiking. Um, so I'll did try you get to get to, that in. Did what? you get to hike when you were here? No, no. And I'm really sad. No, I didn't really get to do much outside of the, the convention um, when I was there. Which was, I mean, it was, it's a bummer, but at the same time, I had such, uh, you know, such a great time there. Okay. Um, I did go on a fishing boat with John Reese Davies. Awesome. The next awesome. day after the convention. And uh, he's, oh, he's such a nice guy. Like, I heard that he, the, so I, I was talking to some of the vendors um, mm -hmm. during Hawaii Con, and he, uh, they were, they were saying like, oh, you know, um, oh my God, like I, like I love, I want to, I hope I get to catch the, uh, the vampire game, but I can't really leave my booth. I, like people were there as vendors. They really couldn't leave and explore the convention because they're, they're doing their thing. Um, but John Reese Davies went around and shook hands with like, and met each and every person that was there because they were not able to like get up and like meet everybody mm -hmm. and, and, and do all the other like constant <clears throat> as they're working. Um, so I thought it was just so nice. Like, he's so sweet. So we did get to go on a fishing boat. And uh, <laughs> it, was, it was so <laughs> funny. We didn't catch any fish. But uh, there was, like, two levels. Like, you can sit up at the top of them. And there's, like, like a ladder mm -hmm. for the bottom. Because the, the, the seat that you were there, if you were, like, with the line. I'm not a fishing person. I don't know. Like, I, I, all the I'm right there with you. I'm right there so with you. I, I don't know, like, the terminology for anything, but there's a seat, there's a chair that you sit in to, like, reel things back in should you catch something. So uh, we're getting, we're going from the top, to, and we're, we're, like, climbing the, that little ladder down, and, you know, the, the boat's rocking and stuff. And so, and so John Reese Davies climbs down the ladder, where he's like, let me climb down the ladder first. That way, if you fall, I shall catch you. And I'm like, if I fall on you, you will die. Like, I will kill you. There's no. <laughs> <laughs> we are not. <laughs> like, he was just so sweet. Like, very, like, gentlemanly. And, like, just, uh, yeah. I was <laughs> just like, listen, if I fall on you, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it was a very fun trip despite, uh, despite not catching anything. Okay. Uh, what are some uh, other hobbies you have uh, or things you enjoy? Uh, so you got hiking. Oh, yes, that's what we're talking about. Um, <laughs> I like hiking. I just like doing anything outdoors. Um, uh, martial okay, arts? Martial arts is definitely a, a thing that I'm very, very proud of. I started. I studied that when I was living in Korea, and I do have my black belt. I don't get to go to that particular I, – I got it in Kuk Sulwan, so I don't get to go to Kuk Sulwan – uh, dojangs regularly, but I still get to catch, you know, a class here or there. Um, still love archery. Archery is mm -hmm. always like my, my love. Um, I grew up with, with archery as part of my PE class mm -hmm. as a kid. Uh, so I always loved it growing up. And then when I, and then when I started studying martial arts, uh, this particular one, um, I both got to uh, become a member of the Korean Archers Association. So I used to go to like those facilities to practice. And then my cook salon master would also take me to uh, learn horseback riding on the weekends mm -hmm. to combine, eventually combine the archery on horseback riding. Um, 
and then get to also practice within within the dojong with short distance. So the 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 bow that I use is um, I think a forty three pound bow. So it's it's right in that sweet spot between if you want to shoot short distance or if you want to shoot long distance. And traditionally, um, uh, in Korean archery, you're pretty much on you're shooting across a field that's like I think a little longer than a soccer field. Mm -hmm. um, onto like a huge like a, like onto a um, like a standing wooden target. So those are the long distance that you shoot. And then you're also within that range. You're, you can also do, do short range. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, last question. Uh, last question I have for you is, uh, are there any projects that you have in the works that you're currently allowed to share bearing any NDAs? Uh, and for audience that doesn't know, NDAs mean non-disclosure agreements, which I'm bound to about 50 of them currently. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There, there's it's a struggle. It's a struggle. Um, for sure, there's uh, have dice will travel because that's mm -hmm. that's been filmed already, um, and that is uh, with DM John Castle, mm -hmm. uh, who works with Death Saves. I don't know if you're familiar with um, Joe Maganello's D and D clothing line. Mm -hmm. So they, he's been at uh, cons. So actually, if you if you've been to a con, and you've bought Death Saves merch, I'm sure you've probably also met John Castle. He's an amazing DM. Yeah. And also terrifying. <laughs> <Because> <laughs> any situation, anytime you sit down at like his table, you're like, oh he oh he gonna kill me today. Like as I, how am I how is John going to kill me? Uh, but he's, he's so, he's brilliant. Um, he's created, uh, his own, like he's built his own world mm -hmm. that, uh, that he runs all of his games on. And so have dice will travel, um, which is also, it's, it's also on Instagram right now. Um, I have the, the, um, the thing for it up on my social media, if anybody okay. wants to, to follow. Um, but uh, yeah, he's created this world that he runs all of his games on. So our our game that we play, our campaign is also run within his world. Uh, and it's kind of this, it's a post-apocalyptic way, 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 way in the future, New York. Mm -hmm. So uh, wow. it's it's brilliant. Like it's it's I'm really impressed by like just the like the detail that that went into it. Uh, that being said, also very terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we did we did film um, season one, and it's being edited right now. Uh, and the reason why, like I know people want it's it's kind of not filmed in the traditional live stream setting because it kind of uh oh, that way that thing i don't want to spoil it's filmed it's, it's a little different it's a little different and you'll see why when you see it but uh it's very funny um and and the world building is so interesting that i think people are really gonna love it awesome awesome i lied i've got one final question for you uh oh You're, okay you ready i think I think I'm okay. I yes. Okay. <laughs> Did you have fun? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> this was I was okay. You were saying how you were like you were nervous. I'm like, no, I was I was like, oh my god, I don't know how am I gonna talk. It's like, <laughs> talking for like an hour and a half. I'm like, how am I gonna talk? Like, what am I gonna talk about for more than 10 minutes? But in, in reality, it's like the, yeah, it's like okay. <laughs> uh, no, this is this is what I was talking about when I'm like, how how were you painfully shy as, yeah. as a child? Because really, like, how, once I start, like, I it's hard for me to like stop talking when I'm get excited about something. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this has been this has been so much fun. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been a complete honor to have you on the show. I would love to have you back on at some point whenever you're you're available and would like to come back on if 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 you would like to. 
It's completely oh, up to anytime, you. anytime. Uh, I would love to, like, if I've got updates or or things like that, and we can, or 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 even if not, even if we just want to talk about traffic and and <laughs> weird experiences. <laughs> I'm also I'm also okay with talking about like completely disastrous things that have happened <laughs> uh, uh, in my childhood. <laughs> so, <laughs> all good. But 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 you see how like with the show the the flow of it like we had a whole set of questions and then we just kind of like detoured completely yes. away from that. <laughs> uh, I went on a couple of tangents. I apologize for that. But, no, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> like, what was I originally talking about? Ah, yes. Um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, that's. I mean, that's always an indication of just like it's just fun. So this has been great. <laughs> Awesome. And uh, again, tell people where they can find you. And, and also, I'll leave links to everything down in the description below of both the awesome. video and the audio version of the podcast. Awesome. Uh, I'm neurological across all things. The only, I'm not on Facebook, uh, but I am on. You're not on missing Facebook. much. Yeah, I got rid of that such a long time ago. And the only the only time I miss it is that like, uh like invites people will be like why didn't you show up to this party i'm like i didn't get invited to this party what party and i'm like oh it was a facebook invite <laughs> uh, you all have to hit me up like like specifically next time be like come Wait. on have you, have you noticed this like when it comes to like social media you have the people who are just holding on for dear lights of facebook and then yeah. you got all the rest of us there on like Instagram or Twitter or um, what was it? Uh, I just got on TikTok and I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to figure it out. Like I only have like a couple of things on there, but I like watching people's videos, but I'm, I'm still trying to figure that shit out. I'm, I'm admittedly like, what is this? <laughs> okay. So um, one of the things like I've been pushing hard with a lot of creators that I know to get on TikTok. Um, one of my upcoming guests, I'm going to be interviewing uh, Gary Vaynerchuk or Gary V. And he was, uh, one of the things he's been saying is like, whatever you upload to Instagram stories or whatever you upload that's like within that minute time frame of a, a video upload, just upload that same thing on TikTok. Yeah, that's what I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know? That's what I did for like one of my things. Uh, I was like, cool, I guess I got, cause I was just trying to like, I use that as a way to like learn what the hell I was like, how I was supposed to do this. Mm -hmm. Um, so that, yeah, no, that's, that's great advice because that's literally how I am like learning to do things on it. Yeah. It, isn't it crazy when you look at how, like, uh, how social media has evolved so much over the last 10 years, like it's. <laughs> yeah. And yet the things we find funny are always the same. The same. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I will live I will watch dumb cat videos all day long. I don't care on what format you put it on, I will watch it. You make a gif of it, I'll watch it. You want to do TikTok, <laughs> I'll watch it. You want to do an Instagram story? Also watching it. I'm good. Like it's I feel like <laughs> our the ma the maturity level of the humor like is a constant. It's right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Oh well, uh, the technology. People, it's just the technology that gets more and more impressive. But, <laughs> but the level of humor and the maturity, like I'm constantly 12 years old. <laughs> but like yeah, technology, like. <laughs> oh god! All right, well, well, people, you'll be able to catch this episode of the Cast of a Podcast with my interview here with Neurological available on multiple platforms on youtube.com slash Mikhail Casanova also on twitch.com I know that was loud I heard it I'm sure you heard <laughs> it so <laughs> on twitch.tv slash Mikhail Casanova and we're on every major podcasting outlet from Apple Podcasts Google Podcasts Stitcher TuneIn Radio uh, Google Play Music we're on Spotify iHeartRadio uh, also coming soon to Sirius Exit Radio. So every major podcast outlet, you can find us. Um, and uh, yeah. I'm glad you left that for the end because that would have made me nervous oh. hearing all of that in the beginning. <laughs> it's like we're everywhere. I am everywhere. Don't <laughs> fuck this up. Uh. <laughs> and Pandora Radio. 
if I left that out. I, I, I <laughs> um, yeah, you know what? I, I should have been like, uh, I should have did just like, where am I at? Boom. Okay, here we are. We're oh, all uh, so uh, w- with that being said, people, uh, Nora and I are signing out. You all have a great one. Hey, did you enjoy this episode of the Casanova Podcast? Well, I'm sure you did. And since you did and you're wondering where else you can find it, you can find it on every podcasting outlet. Yes, it includes Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Launchpad DM by Podcast One, and so much more. And the only thing I ask of you is if you truly enjoyed it, even if you didn't enjoy it, please leave a rating and tell us what you thought of it, what you liked, what you didn't like, and everything in between. And also, if you're looking for video formats of this podcast and many more, you'll be able to find them on youtube.com slash Casanova as well as on twitch.tv slash Casanova and new episodes every single Monday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So, that being said, this is Mikhail Casanova, Hawaii's favorite YouTuber. I am signing out. You guys have a great one.